Welcome back. I'm Lee Tyrell. Today marks World Autism Awareness Day, and April is Autism Awareness Month. So tonight I'll talk with Tyrell, a discussion with specialists who treat children on the autism spectrum. Joining me now in the studio, Deborah Harris, who is the co-founder and director of the Elijah School for Children with Autism, and Justin DiScalfani, clinical director at the Elijah School. And Elijah stands for... Help me with that. Empowering Long Island's journey through autism. All right. How long has the school been around, Deborah? The school opened in 2006. Mm -hmm. um, the foundation's been around since 2002. You have a child on the autism spectrum? Yes. My son, Jason, is 13 years old, and he was diagnosed when he was 20 months old. Oh, my goodness. And what was your reaction as a mother? Um, it was very devastating, as you can imagine. And at the time, there wasn't really a lot of resources. That's what I was going to say. A lot has changed in 13 years, in 12, 13 years since he was first diagnosed. Yeah, tremendously. A lot of more resources now and a lot of more advocacy for services. And you, we just saw the numbers come out last week, Justin, by the way. The CDC was saying they're looking at the rate now about being one in 88 children uh, affected by autism. But they say it means we know a lot more about autism than we did just 10 years ago, so more children are considered to be on the spectrum. Along with that, do we have better ideas now on how to treat them? Absolutely. Okay. We have a, a lot of good tools, especially at the Elijah School. Um, we use an approach called Applied Behavior Analysis. Yeah, ABA, tell me about that. What is that? Um, right now it has the most evidence for treating autism, and it does treat the core deficits, so social communication. Um, building relationships, also dealing with any problem behavior. Um, so that's really the main approach that we use at the school. Um, any, anything else that's evidence-based to make sure people are aware of that. Now, Deborah, uh, sending a child to a school like the Elijah School instead of, um, instead of mainstreaming them in some cases, how does that work and how does that uh, make things different for the child and the family? It's a, it's a big advocacy process. Um, local school districts have the ability to educate children with autism, but mm -hmm. often there's a subset of the population that need a more intensive approach. And so that's where the Elijah School is able to fill in the gap for those children who have more um, intensive needs. Um, so parents need to advocate for them to go to private schools or like a school like ours, which is totally private, receives no funding from New York State. So how does going to uh, the Elijah School work for, for a child? Is it is it five days a week? Is it um, at what age would they start? How long would they stay? How does this type of treatment work for them? Our school uh, starts from three years old to 21, where okay. students will age out. And they receive one-to-one -one instruction throughout the day. So our school is truly for children who have an intensive need. So one-to-one -one instruction all day long from 9 till about 3 o'clock. And what I've heard from parents, too, especially when you say three years old to 21, a lot of parents who have children with autism say there's more of a need these days for older children, children with autism, because they're doing so much uh, as, as into an older age now, and there aren't really a lot of programs to help, you know, 13, 14, 15-year-old kids with, with autism, Justin. Mm -hmm, absolutely. I know that's a big area that's just starting to get some attention now is what services can be provided as mm -hmm. they transition out of placements like our school or even their public school programs into adulthood and hopefully there could be more of a shift of focus and funding for programs like that. What, what, what is the future of, of helping um, kids with autism from the way you see it since you're so involved in the process on a day-by-day -day basis? Is it getting any easier for parents and families? It's getting more complicated because of the funding stream drying up, uh, especially with the economy. Right, However, as parents become more educated and they learn to advocate for their children, mm -hmm. they're able to really get the services that they need. And so the money that's spent is, is focused on the, s the special services that the children need. So their, their outcome at the end is something that they can give back to the community, they could be part of the community, and they're able to be part of their families as opposed to going to residential placements. So screening more. still about 18 months to two years? Is that the recommendation? As early as possible. As, as early yes. as possible, because we've seen that early intervention really does make a difference. In the final 30 seconds, Justin, if a, if a parent has had a child who's been diagnosed with autism, it's so easy to say the first thing to do is not to panic. But really, it, can can you give them some advice? <laughs> I think it's it's natural to panic, but to try to be to try to seek out professionals that can help educate them on most effective treatments out there that have e evidence to support them. Um, because putting their time and resources into those treatments that we do know works mm -hmm. will is will change their trajectory 
um, as they get older and later in life and it's nice have to a know. better outcome. It's nice to know there's a lot more support and a lot more advocates for parents uh, with children with autism these days. Thank you so much. Deborah, Thank good to meet you. Justin, you. you as well. Thank you, Thank you so much you for coming much. in. If you want some more information about the Elijah School for Children with Autism, just go to Elijah.org. We also have a link listed on News12.com. Click on Numbers and Links and I'll have some more information on my Facebook page.